If you look at stress in the dictionary, the first one that comes up is pressure or tension exerted on an object. And we, you know, we use the term to describe pressure on us. We're not actually being pushed down. We perceive it. Uh, now, the great thing about engineering, one of the great things about engineering, is when we come to design something, we actually can work out where the stress is using maths, which is awesome. So the reason that you can trust to go on a plane is that you trust that someone like me has done some calculations and has worked out which parts of the plane are going to be under the most stress and pressure. And then you assume that those people have done the necessary to strengthen up those parts of the plane to stop it from falling out of the sky. Unfortunately, the maths isn't there where we can yet do that with people. Now, I work with a lot of people who are suffering chronic stress and burnout. And so, I also, I'm not a doctor. Uh, I, this is what I see in the number of the people, the clients that I work with, is that the stress manifests itself in their blood pressure and, and their, their heart rate, and, uh, and, and that's a really useful indicator. Uh, digestively as well. You see a lot of uh, my clients have digestive issues when they come to me, and those become reduced uh, as we deal with their stress. And cognitively, uh, pe people when they're stressed, they can make some really weird decisions, really weird decisions. So we'll explore some of that, and we'll be delving into the brain a little bit further along. 